we're going to look at today. Now, don't forget our anchor sitting scripture is Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Okay, let's be on our feet to read Acts 2 42 to start together. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. Project for me, thank you. And let's read together. Let's read together. I'm waiting for the day. Uh, technical department, where is it, Brother Tunji? I'm waiting for the day you will sit down like Brother Precious like this and there will be no problem in the technical. I'm waiting for that. You better train your people very well or else they will stop your prayer from traveling out. Brother Tunji, okay, Brother Tunji, Brother Tunji, train them in such a way that you will sit down in church like this and nothing will go wrong in the technical. So don't enter there now. Are you hearing me? Sit, let's see whether you, are, you pass the test. The same thing I'm waiting for the day, Mommy Ewa, that you will raise the choir. You will sit down like this and be watching them sing. We, you have not gotten there. Don't shake your head. <laughs> are you sure you have gotten there? With this Nimegi that you sang today? <laughs> hey, see the bell. Praise the Lord. Can we read together? After the count of three. One two and let's go and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and prayers now don't forget what i've been teaching in the what in the apostles doctrine now i told you that a doctrine is a pattern a doctrine is a style the apostles gave them a pattern and that's what i've been giving you a pattern now, next week, Sunday, please don't meet. Ah, sorry. That will be in July. That will be in July. First Sunday in July. There's a question that the Lord wants me to answer. Can I still practice the culture, cultural cultures, and the, th the traditions they do in my family after I must have given my life to Christ? I will show you traditions that have demonic undertone. We'll look at some things at, in July. Because Christians are gradually compromising because the devil is using tricks now against us. May you not fall. I say, may you not lose your salvation. So the apostles gave them what? Doctrine. They gave them a pattern. Now be seated. Now the one we are looking at today, hear me, is the doctrine of forgiveness as a major doctrine in the body of Christ. Now listen, forgiveness is compulsory. If you say you are a born again Christian, and you do not forgive, you are not born again. Forgiveness is compulsory. Some people say, I don't have the gift of forgiving, forgiveness. Forgiveness is not a gift. Hear me. It's not a gift. It's a nature we develop. Let's look at scriptures to see what the Bible says. Mark chapter 11, 24 to 26. And Romans chapter 12, 18 to 21. Mark chapter 11, 24 to 26. Romans chapter 12, from verse 18 to 21. Now look at Mark chapter 11. It says, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will receive them. Now go to the next scripture. Believe that you receive them. And you will receive them. Talking about prayer. He now switched it in verse 25. Verse 25. Move fast. He now switched it in, in verse 25. To show us that forgiveness is compulsory in the body of Christ. You can't say you are born again. And you won't, you won't practice it. It says and whenever you stand praying. If you have anything against anyone if anyone has offended you now look at if you refuse to forgive you are the one that is holding that person that's why the bible says if you have anything against he who does not forgive is holding somebody in his mind now and the bible what does the bible says he said forgive him that your father in heaven may also forgive you your trespass wait for me it means that if you refuse to forgive that person, you are holding in your mind. Now, don't forget, you can a person cannot uh, uh, you you cannot be talking about forgiveness if somebody have not hurt you. Am I communicating? It means that that person have done something that has hurt you, and the Bible says, 
you must let him go if you want your heavenly father to also forgive you. Let's read 26. So which means forgiveness is like a bouncing ball. If you don't bounce it towards others, God won't bounce it towards you. You won't have access to forgiveness from God if you refuse to forgive those that offend you. Or you'll have concentrate. Verse 26. 26. Be fast. There's no time. We have a lot of things to learn. He said, but if you do not forgive, what will happen to you? He said, neither will your heavenly father in heaven forgive your trespass. Hey! It means that if I say, no, 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 me, I will not forgive him. I will not forgive her. It means that the same way God will not forgive me. Now, can you now see that forgiveness is compulsory? It is part of the doctrines of the body of Christ that is lost. In fact, at times, if you hear some Christians pray and curse their, those that offend them, you'll be afraid. I was listening. I know it was a friend that was sharing with me. Many years ago, I went to visit him. He said, Pastor Prince, look at this church. The pastor told all of them to come with black currant. You know what they call black currant? It's a juice. They came with black currants and the pastor said, pour it in a cup. They poured it in a cup. The pastor said, let us pray. Lift up your voice. As you are pouring it down, Lord, let the blood of my enemy and the, their, their children's blood begin to splash just like this on the express road in motor accident. And people started praying, oh, Lua, be motion the black currant, hey, your tummy, hey, your tummy, oh, my, tummy, oh, come on, I am, oh, Lua, come on, shufu, come on, shufu, Lori, express through, ah, in the church of Jesus. You now see a pastor want to lead prayer, you say, that the ever there, lo, gunu, kilo, ya, go, she, for laying in, oh, ya, dua, ah. And you know, the problem is this. We have so many Christians that believe in the servants of God but does not know the Bible. And that's one of the signs of the end time. In Matthew 24, they asked Jesus, what will be the signs to show that we are getting close to the end? He said, false prophets will arise. He said, many shall come saying, I'm Christ. Now, the word Christ does not mean Jesus. The word Christ means anointed. They will say, I'm anointed. And they will lead many astray. Now, what does that mean? It means that there will be too much emphasis on the anointed at the end time that people will neglect the real thing in the Bible. Forgiveness is compulsory. But as we go on, I will show you that what you think, what we call forgiveness is not actually what we call forgiveness. I will show you the meaning. Let's read, let's confirm from the second scripture again. Romans chapter 12, verse 18. Romans chapter 12, yes, from verse 18. It says, if it is possible, as much as depends on you. Live what? Live peaceably with how many men? All men. Next verse. Beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to earth. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. 20. Move very fast. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. He's saying something. You won't understand it now, but when we get there, I'll tell you. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing, for in so doing, you will eat coals of fire on his head. 21. 21. Do not be overcome. Do not, sorry, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, which means, do not allow the attitude of an evil person turn you to become an evil person too. Now, what's our focus forgiveness? We see in the scriptures, in the scriptural references, that forgiveness is a style in the body of Christ. Born again Christians are people who encounter, who had an encounter with the with uh, with God, who gained access to mercy in bracket forgiveness of sins by the blood of Jesus and received new life. Everyone who is, is in Christ became one by the forgiveness they obtained. Now, and if we say we obtained forgiveness, we should give it. You did not become born again because you were righteous. You, born, you became born again because you obtained what? Mercy. So let's now say, what is forgiveness? Because some of you think forgiveness is what you... Okay, let me not go too fast. What is forgiveness? Listen, I went to the dictionary. It says, it is to stop feeling angry about someone 
for the wrong they did or they've done against you. Now, what is forgiveness? It is to stop feeling angry. Now, forgiveness does not say, let me give him his job back again. Hello? Forgiveness does not mean, let me bring him back to my life again. No. Forgiveness does not mean, let me, let me begin to do as I used to do before again. No. Forgiveness simply means, you stop feeling angry. You know how you feel angry when you think of what that person did. Ha, ha, ha. There's one movie I, 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 I'm watching of recent. I love the man's movie. That's Mr. Loy. Where we all got it wrong. He's the one he's doing now. This young man, because they didn't send him to school, so he hated his parents. He grew up very rich and he didn't want to see them. Now, unforgiveness is for you to harbor anger because of what people did to you that's what it means you are still angry forgiveness does not mean okay okay i will embrace you no forgiveness is to remove that anger to stop feeling angry over what they did you may not give the person a second chance in your life but stop feeling angry Here. that's why unforgiveness is so dangerous because every single time you think of the pain you feel bad I, I wrote here it does not mean to embrace again it does not mean close your eyes and open your arms again it does not mean give them the same opportunity now, forgiveness just has to do with you dealing with the issue that is making you angry. I remember when my dad returned and uh, met us. He came with that time. The bag that was raining was Nigerian army bag. They call it Nigerian army. He bought it. He bought uh, one one for each of us. I carried the bag. I was happy. I was happy. My mother looked at us. Your father that left you when you were in primary two. Now you are in SS1. He came back. He bought one bag. And you are almost sleeping with the bag. Then she told me, she reminded us some of the things my daddy did. The way, the way, the things he said. The way we were sent out of school. The way he went to tell them that he's no longer our father. When my mom said all these things, I became angry again. The next time I saw him, he came to see me in school. I didn't attend to him. And I told him, you are not my father. All this and this and this you did. He looked at me, he nodded his head. And left. I didn't know that I was harming myself. Until I got born again. Listen, if you don't release that pain in your heart because of what somebody have done hear me you are blocking yourself i will show you the danger because you won't have access to mercy from god listen it only means stop getting angry with them for what they did be listen, because if you don't stop getting angry, hear me, unforgiveness, the pain, that anger will now generate, begin to grow, to become hatred. It starts with a feeling of angry, anger. Ah, I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Jide, Jide, Tati, John Kotarawa for the past 10 years. Okonde, Jamisile. Ah, ah, Jide, Kuni, Dafun, Jide. You know, because you were angry. Now, listen, the Bible says, in your anger, do not sin. It means that when you are angry, you have not committed sin. But if you don't manage that anger, that anger can lead you to do the things that will now become sinful. Am I communicating? That's why the Bible is saying, forgive. Now, what does it mean to forgive? 
conquer that thing you are always thinking about that is making you to feel angry with about that person. Listen, it can degenerate, move from hatred to then you want to be vengeful. Then you are looking for opportunity to pay back. You are looking for opportunity to pay back. That's why the Bible says, hey, you better forgive. I wrote here, anger is a strong feeling. If not well managed, it will prompt you to do the things that you won't do on a normal, on a norms. You know that some things on the norms you won't do. But when you are angry, you will, have, you will do it. That's why you have to forgive. Forgiveness even is, is for your own sake. You know why? The person that hurts you that you refuse to forgive may be enjoying his life. But it is you that is getting angry. But that person is enjoying his life. It is you. <laughs> ah, ah, this man, this man, you know, go better for <laughs> I met a young man during my wife's birthday. He came with her brother, uh, you know, and while they were eating, I was trying to embrace him. Oh, pastor, me, we're discussing. He said, ah, pastor, alone, 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 ah. Brother, only me for me. If you know what my wife did for me, I made up my mind. I will ah, pastor, my fair, I would do Solomon law. Me, then he fell once he Mama, break your heart in one. The lady that hurt him is living her life. I want you to understand that forgiveness benefits you than the person that hurt you. They, are, they made time to ask some of the Boko You know, during the Obasan Just regime, they captured some of these Boko Haram people. They, what got them angry? They're angry. Why are they angry? Because their leader was killed. They killed their leader. Boko Haram is just like a sect. They, a group of people, they had their own philosophy. But because their leader was killed, they got angry, we are going to revenge. But do you know that because of unforgiveness, they are living in the forest. They can't live among us. They are not free. That's what unforgiveness will do for you to you. While the person that hurts you, the Nigerian government that hurts them is working freely. Hello. Now, what is happening to these uh, guys too? The Igbos, uh, what do you call this? Uh, uh, Biafrans. I, I, I pop. Can they work freely? No, now. They too are angry. We want our canoe. We want canoe. We want canoe. They are angry. And we are going to make sure we shut down all the Easterners. They are not shutting down where the president is. The man is enjoying himself. Now you shut down your market in the East. What are you doing? You are destroying the economy of your town. Because you are angry. Anger is a blindfold. Iboju, Onongpeni, Emi Ibinu, Kije Kenyonu Street. I hear. You didn't hear me. I said, say I hear. So you have to conquer it. You know I'm showing you all these things? For you to know that it hurts you more. Some will say, Pastor, you don't know my story. I thank God for your story. I know your story. I understand. I am not disputing that they hurt you. But let God heal you. Forgiveness benefits you more than the person that offends you. Listen, unforgiveness is a prison. See what unforgiveness did to somebody like Absalom. Have you read Absalom's story before? The Bible says he's so handsome that women used to come and cut his hair. Sherry, uh, are human hair? Go and read this story. Women used to come and cut. The Bible says he will leave his hair. His hair used to touch the ground. So women will come and cut it's in the Bible, cut his hair. They will go and they will go and attach it to their own. So if anybody tell you the attachment is from underwater and a lie, 
Absalom was the first manufacturer of human hair. But look at what unforgiveness turned him into. Let's look at the Bible. 2 Samuel chapter 13, 19 to 29. 2 Samuel 13, 19 to 29. Please follow, follow me, follow me, follow me. Follow me. Then Tamar put ashes on her head and tore her robe of many colors that was on her and laid hand on her head and went away crying bitterly. Her brother raped her. Her brother raped her and she's the sister of Amnon, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, Absalom. And Absalom, her brother, said to her, has Amnon, your brother, been with you? Which means, has he raped you? But now, hold your peace, my sister. He is your brother. Do not take this thing to heart. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother's Absalom's house. Can you see the mistake of Absalom? He now put Tamar in his house. Every day Tamar will be crying. Every day. That was what he was hearing. But when the no, no, we have, we have jumped something. We have, okay, okay. But when, sorry, come back, come back, come back. But when the king, when, when King David heard of these things, he was very angry. David was angry. He showed his own anger. But what happened to the next? The next look at Absalom. And Absalom spoke to his brother Amnon, neither good nor what? Nor bad. Hey, you know one man more. Look at Absalom. Neither good nor bad. For Absalom hated Amnon. Can you see? Unforgiveness had become hate because he had forced his sister, Tamar. He didn't stop the hell. Move on. And it came to pass. After how many years? Two full years of nursing unforgiveness that had become hatred. He's now looking for a way to express that Absalom had sheep shearers in Baal Hazor, which is near Ephraim. So Absalom invited all the king's sons. Come and join me. I have celebration. Then Absalom came to the king and said, kindly note, your servant had sheep shearers. Please let the king and his servant come with your servant. Can you see that the hatred had now become uh, degenerated? It had become plotting of evil plots. Scheming. But the king said to Absalom, No, my son, let us not all go now. Least we be, we be a burden to you. Then he urged him, but he would not go. And he blessed him. He knew where he was going. He didn't want the king. Then Absalom said, If not, please let my brother Amnon Go with us. And the king said to him, Why should he go with you? Why now? Move on, move on, move on. We don't have all the time. But Absalom urged him, so he let Amnon and all the king's son go with him. Verse 28. Now Absalom had commanded his servant, saying, Watch now, when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, for you to know that he was enjoying himself, the people that hurt you, that you refuse to forgive. They are enjoying themselves. Look at, he said, when his heart is merry, to what we should you do? And when I say to you, strike Amnon, then kill him. Do not be afraid. Have I not commanded you? Be courageous and vigilant. Then the last one, if I continue preaching, verse 29. 29. So the servant of Absalom did to Amnon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and each one got on his moles and fled. Can you see that unforgiveness turned him into a murderer? If you don't break the bag of unforgiveness, the bag of unforgiveness, sir, ma, it will turn you to something else. I'm telling you, I will teach you how to conquer it. If you don't break it, it will turn you to something else. Meanwhile, those people are enjoying their lives. Living their life on. But don't forget, it will move from unforgiveness to hatred. From unhatred to scheming. From scheming to what? To doing something terrible. How 
are believers, sorry, how as believers are, are we to undo those that trespass against us? How as believers are we to undo those that trespass? Let's look at the standard of the Bible. Let's take number one, Luke chapter 17, 3 to 4. How are we to undo it when people sin against us? When people do terrible things to us? How are we to undo it? How are we to undo it? Now, if you are finished writing, please look up. If you are finished writing, Luke chapter 17, verse 3 and verse 4. Are you all there now? Let's read. Let's read together. One, two, and let's read. Take heed to yourself. I didn't hear you. Let's come again. Take heed to yourself. If your brother sin against you, what should you do? And if you what? Do what? Read verse 4. Let's go. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, what should you do? Seven times in a day, returns to you. What should you do? Saying, I repent. You should what? Now, this is the realm that some people are holding. But I will show you something in the next one. The Bible talks about it here. It said, if your brother sin against you, what should be the first thing? Talk about it. It says rebuke him. What does that mean? Talk about it. Somebody is doing what is bad. You are keeping quiet. And you are saying, they say I should forgive. 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 Don't let it go under the carpet. Have you talked about the issue? Even at home, between husband and wife, especially you wives, when you want to complain, your husband must hear. But when your husband wants to complain, you will cry. When your husband wants to complain, you will say it's wicked. When your husband wants to complain, you will say he doesn't understand you. Allow him to express his mind too. That's why so many men are suffering in marriage. As so many women too are suffering in marriage. The Bible says, if he sin against you, the first thing is to what? Call, talk up. Let's discuss it. Ah, brother Sheo, I don't like it. Why are you going to, why did you use my plates to eat and you left it in the wash and bowl? I don't leave my plates like that. I don't like it. Now, this first, the Bible says, if he repents, that's when you should forgive. First set, Niel. But what I want to show you is that you must talk about the issue that made you hurt. Hello, me on this course, our mabinu. It's an illogical thing. Ah, I want share one moment. Come and be fan. We are on love. We miss be tears. Tears if I mean illogical thing. I want share me be. I mean illogical thing. Do they know whether they offend you? Did you talk about it? Hello, nice, sir. ma, sir. Nice, sir. I want nothing she pass here. One queen, 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 my wife was not part of those that she had. The portion that came to him, it was the ear of the <laughs> of the cow that was on his plate. And he got angry. He got angry. He felt offended. He, he left the food. The gift he was also giving, he didn't drop it. He stopped coming to church. After some time that I, I now started, oh, brother, I read, brother, we didn't see each other, brother, he now told me, after so many months that he was offended, I said, in what? He said, the food that they share, they give him the ear of the, of the, of the, of the cow. I said, was he me? He said, no. Was he my wife? He said, no. He said, the people that I share, did you now eat it? He said, no. Me, I didn't know that you didn't eat. And he has been angry. Now, Christians, everybody look up. We are believers now. When people tell you you offend them, please, for the sake of helping them to heal, listen. Stop saying, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, no, 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 don't do that. I 
Are you sure you're with me? Now, that is the first standard, the first style. Don't talk behind like Mommy Messi is talking behind. Talk loud. Uh -huh. Because if you are talking behind, the people will not know. And if you feel they are going doing night service, don't shout in public. Go to them. Mrs. Christopher Ewa, Enshoju Shaju. This is the reason why I said, because at times you may even have good points, hear me, and have bad presentation. You aggravate the matter. Now, back to what we are saying. Now, beloved, this first one that I've just shown you now is the lowest form of forgiveness. I wrote here, we should talk about the issue that made you hurt, that made you hurt. Pay attention to that scripture. It says your brother. Now, the word your brother here means your fellow Christian. This, this number one is towards your fellow Christian. The word your brother here can be your spouses. But the main message is that you must address it. Please don't be quiet. Or else you might just kill yourself being angry. I used to be at this level. That was my style. If you offend me, I will just shift. I won't say anything about it. I will just shift from you. If I brought it into my pastoral ministry, if you offend me, I will just shift. But when I started looking at this scripture, I said, let's talk about this thing. In fact, when I was preparing my message, I, I told myself, I'm waiting for one of, our, uh, one of, one of the people that offend me, one of us. That I, I didn't talk about this thing. I sent this person message somewhere to do something for me. He didn't go to do it. The people confronted him there. He told them that, is he the one? They should come and meet me. I overlooked it. The second one to happen again. The same thing. See, if you don't talk about these issues, it will repeat and you continue to remain hot. And see, if Jesus should come and meet you in unforgiveness, you go nowhere. And rapture does not have second batch. It's not like admission in the university that says, but if you miss batch one, you meet batch. Rapture no gets second batch. And how will it be when trumpet sound? Everybody has gone. And they come to, the, to your house. I know, I know some people that would like to, if God forbid, if rapture take place, I, I know some people who want to come to my house. Abi, I miss it. Ile papa la nkalo. Ebo ka e bati lo. To ra won le nu to ba lo yen, ko ta ko ma lo. O ma lead awon yen wa le ministry. Bo ko da ke ma le gbodo lo. Loruko Jesu e lo. Praise the Lord. Now, let's now go to number two. We've seen number one. Look at this second phase. Matthew chapter 5. 45 and, uh, 44 and 45. And still the Bible says we must forgive. Now look at this one. This said. He said what I say to you. Number one, do what? Love your enemies. Is it easy? Who is an enemy? An enemy is somebody that hates you and does not hide it. They hate you and they are not hiding it. And the Bible is saying, Jesus said, love them. Go for that. He said, bless them who curse you. Somebody is saying, look at you, look at you. He, 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 this is how it will be. And the Bible is saying, don't curse them back. Ah, it is not going to be common. Today's Christians cannot do it. Today's Christian? At one mass, I only see this only a book, Otiwa Kuawa Baba Keller Rogbe Baba Keller Rogbe Oya Iwele Rogbe Rogbe Baba Keller Look at the scripture. The Bible says, bless those that curse you. Do you know why? There is a covenant of Abraham that says, whoever curses you is cursed. 
You don't need to curse them. We are going somewhere. He didn't stop the hell. What's the next one? He said, pray for, the, for those who spitefully. I went to the dictionary to check spitefully. He said, spitefully use you. Wait for me here. To spitefully use a person is to be sending you on degrading errand. Imagine, to the way, Oje, Aburo, I mean, Yawo, Aburo, Come back, Lola. She bought me one, Aburo, me one, I could see, Joe, my bon weekend, the initial to my bar machine. Now, you marry their brother, they now brought their children's clothes. Their children's pant. And tell you, yeah, 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 34. Ah, you don't call their brother. Their brother. Ah, Abro me, wo, yawo, yawo, giddy lo fe, yawo, giddy lo fe, omo giddy ni, mo kon lele. Despitefully use you. I won't go, I won't go, I won't go, I won't go, once in shop, later right about our power to bad dale. What they want to call John Lungbe? Liberty in shop, boy. I'm back on Nuba. Well, eh? Oh, darling, you want to see that arrow? Despitefully using you. You want them a trick, you know, Joe. They are on you salaries, but they are buying cars. Despitefully using you. And the Bible says you do what? Pray for them. I had one preacher say, the Bible did not tell us the kind of prayer we should pray for them. But you should look at the sequence. No, 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 no. Don't say yes. A word or tomb babble at okay. What you understand, you will pray at us. Do you understand? I want you to understand. Oh yeah. The next one, okay? And persecute you. Now he said, look at that. He said, when you do all these things, who are you? That you may be sons of the Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. Now let's now read, let's read my note. Follow my note. Are you clear with the reading? Here, Jesus taught the disciples a higher dimension of forgiveness. They should learn to forgive even if the people involved are not repentant. Even if the people involved are not ready to repent, are not ready to say sorry. That's why Jesus had to balance this with this one. I want to, to share to share but you ready at so sorry. Ti won de ready at repent. Show wa ni dariji ni. That's what we are treating here. Because mo ke so mo fi ati the first one mo bibeli ni correct the book won tan ba sigba dariji won. But awon eleyi won ready at e ti ri. Won won ready at wa. Beloved, it was from this scripture, hear me. I learned how to forgive in advance. Because some people don't have heaven they want to go to. And they want you to join them to hell. Say, God forbid. I didn't hear you. Let's go further. A perfect example of this is Brother Stephen. In Acts chapter 7. Let's look at that. 58 to 60. Brother Stephen is a perfect example. Acts chapter 7. From verse 58, Mrs. Christopher, are you here? Let's read together now. One, two, and let's go. And they cast him out of the city. And did what? And stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. Please follow this read. I want you to read with me loud. Verse 59. Let's go. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Verse 60. He was praying as they were stoning him. And what was this? He saying, then he knelt down 
and cried with a loud and cried out with a loud voice. What did he say? Lord, do not charge them with this sin. Can you see forgiveness in advance? One leg, come on. One leg, come on. Oh, then you look at your. Oluwa jo e ma se fi ese ton dai oluwa ma se fi da won lejo how many of you will say that when it is sokulasa sambi ara o jabiji sambi ara o jabiji sambi ara ko jabiji ko pare me fun me oya o sambi a Hello. Come down a bit. Can you see that we need prayer? At the dying moment, they were stoning this man. Ah. But me no kati mo so dia the level in la no money oluwa. No e mi no lowo o. There is no special heaven for pastor. There is even for member. He was dying. They were stoning him. Yet he was saying, Father, please don't hold it against them. Father, please don't hold it against them. That's why I'm asking most of these prophets leading prayers, where does this prayer point come from? And all the fall and die. Oh, yeah, die, die, die. How many people don't die? No, let's be sincere. How many people don't die? Mama maker, I know you are the owner, you are the whole one holding my destiny. Die, die, die. Mama maker, don't buy a new car. You wait, they say die, die, die. You never buy a bicycle. It's to show you that God will only answer prayers according to his will. I only used to take when I'm praying prayer like I always say, Lord, please fight for me. Lord, vindicate me. I don't know how you will do it, but vindicate me. If he chooses to kill somebody for me to be vindicated, let it be his choice. Let it not be me. Are you sure you are here? Yes, sir. Some people here didn't answer. Are you sure you are here? Yes, sir. Let's rush through because of time. I have five more minutes. Last question. How can you get to this point in forgiveness? How can you get to this point? This point that Stephen is was before he died. How can you get to this point as a Christian? I'll tell you four things and I'll close. Number one, allow the word of God to mold you. Hello, Mumo ke bi mo se nwa asu yi awon tun so pe ko le sese o wa lara wa nbi eh igbaye Steven ni e won wa lara wa nbi o te o te sa me ko lati enka e mo bible ni acts of the apostles lanka aya ti joko new testament ni era wa ni okay what she means is that it is their time not our time Now, these are the th reasons why the word of God does not have the power to transform us. We resist the word. Hello? Answer me now. Hello? Ah. Listen, there is nothing that can change your life but the word of God. And how will you receive the word that will change your life? It's like preaching like this. You hear it, you make up your mind. You hear it, you make up your mind. You hear it, you make up your mind. That was how me too started as a young Christian. I heard the word. And I made up my mind. I will not be angry again. I made up my mind. I will not be keeping malice again. I made up my mind. I will not fight again. Ah, I, I, it was both high school I went to. I love fighting. I, I fought in the school before I broke somebody's hand. I ran home. When it comes to fight, I love it not with weapons, but with this hand. And one thing with me, I was so close with my mom. As I got home, my mommy saw me. What happened? I told her everything. 
I was playing football on my own. And he was coming with about six boys. They were hailing him. He said, I'm just fat. That he's small, he will beat me. And I, he, he provoked me. I got angry. I sat down on him. I punched his mouth very well. My mom said, what now happened? I said, and they separate us. I went back to football. As I was playing, I just heard it. People were shouting his name as he was coming. I turned back and I kicked him. He fell on his hand and his hand broke. My mom said, I support you. I didn't know that they rushed him to the hospital. His mother now came. They traced our house. As they got there, my mommy did not bring me out. He said, tell your son to see what happened. The whole thing I told my mom was what he said. My mommy now said, is my son guilty? So when I became born again, I had to leave all those natures. What made me leave it? The word I was hearing. If you are hearing the word of God and you are showing reasons why you should not obey, you can't change. Stop giving excuses for not obeying the word of God. Excuses like it is hard. Some will say, I cannot do it. Some will say, I will become like a fool. Some will say, people will mock me. Beloved, if you don't make up your mind to live in accordance, hear me, you won't change you. Number two, how to get to that point. Stop expecting too much from people. Understand that every living being is flesh. Stop expecting too. If you are expecting too much from people, you will be disappointed. Ah, he cannot do it. He cannot say this. He cannot say that. Don't expect too much from anyone. When you are dealing with people, understand that every human is flesh. I've, I've shared with you several testimonies, encounters, even me that I'm your pastor. I learned it from Pastor E.A. E. Adeboe. My mentor went to ask him, Baba, you are our father of faith. How have you lived your Christian life? that you have not fallen into fornication all these years. He said, Pastor Adeboe said, the first key is that I don't trust myself. If Baba Adeboe could say that, what does that mean? Some of you, you too much trust yourself. You so much rate yourself. You say, uh, uh, if I go on visitation to a sister's house, nothing will happen. Who told you that one? Even if I see a sister's nakedness, nothing will happen. Uh, some of you sisters I say, ah, Pastor, who see you what only no let me lori me if you just see the irony. Ulan will tell Tom Magbe a lot of my one con lost so three nights. Oh, Nick bad do I could come bemo. One year joking will yonder. Tim of my baby is like one yonder just my movie. Don't trust yourself to that point. Where is that nothing will happen? Who told you that? What's number three? Number three. What's number three? Keep praying for grace to grow in the ability to forgive. You need prayer. You'll be praying for yourself. And can I tell you the truth? Whatsoever you pray about will always come your way. When you start praying for patience, people will provoke you more. When you start praying for grace to increase in forgiveness, people will hurt you more until you get tired of unforgiveness. I want, I'm rushing because of time. Number four, I'll stop at number five. Avoid listening. Here I mean this one. Avoid listening to demonic newscasters. 
people who go around spreading reports that provokes you. Let me come again. Avoid listening to demonic newscasters. You know, there are some people, they are agents of the devil. What is their job? They will come around. Ah, don't listen to them anyone that keeps to that comes around to tell you the things that will hurt you block them and finally talk to matured believers about your hearts when you are hurt by people. See, some hurts, you can't keep it to yourself. Let me come again. Talk to what? Matured believers. Imagine if Amnon has talked to somebody. Uh, sorry, if Absalom had talked to somebody. But for two years, oh, her boy. I don't know if I'm Talk to matured believers. Do, not all believers are matured. I'm not talking about maturity in age now maturity when it comes to understanding of scriptures people that when you share your heart they will not in make you to feel more hot people that when you talk about your heart they will laugh so pastor this one is more now i remember when i went to talk to uh, my mentor's wife uh, about something that's uh, mommy adilakum as i told her that ah mommy would to me Ah, mommy, can you do me? This I remember. Teba mo kanti mo she mo fi ka mi mo fi yawo mo fi draw ni bank ni ba to need your wo. I gave them my my vehicle particulars. <laughs> mommy, I love. Why must you give them your vehicle particulars? Are you Jesus? You don't do that. You expect too much. That's why you went so so high. I said, Mommy, she am okay. He just told my crew in church by. What can't they want to suffer me? Our assignment here is finished. Because I rebuked them over something. And the next day they came, our assignment here is finished. And Mommy laughed. She now told me their own. A brother who came from America, one of their members, told them he, their containers are coming of goods, showed them several documents. Please help us. And Bishop said, We don't have anything to gain from this business, so, but we won't allow your goods to go into demorage. They gathered members of church, people gathered resources for the brother. I said, Faking. I want you to gather at your bad church. Members gave because they trust their pastor. He told them percentage that some of them will get back. But I your father as a church. You. He said, what about people that were so blessed, raised from nothing, they became something, and they came, sir. We just came to tell you that our status can no longer worship in this church. The people of our class worship in cathedrals. Bishop said he will see them going like this. He said, so whenever you have special programs, sir, we can be coming. Ah! When I had the, uh, their own, eh, I threw in my own. Listen, even the white man said it, that a problem that is shared is half solved. Let's close this service. Are you blessed? So you are born again, sir. Don't let the devil take you to hell. If you are hot, talk to matured believers. And I'm hot too. And I don't like what my wife did. I don't like the way my husband handled it. 
if I don't like what my, even if it's your pastor, I don't like pastor, I don't like what my pastor did. Don't report your, don't go to a junior person to talk about your pastor. Talk to a mature believer. I know a mature believer will say, go see your pastor. And those of you pastors watching online, don't turn yourself to think God. That your member cannot come. You are now saying, you are talking to me. I'm your father in the Lord. I will curse you. No. Me, Pastor Prince, I don't have anointing to curse anybody. The anointing I have is to raise men. That's why when people come to me and tell me that, sir, people have come to see me before, sir, I don't like what you said. You said this. I said, Did I actually say it? Because one thing I don't have is I don't remember so many things. They actually said, if you can prove, ah, and I'm sorry, you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That was not what I meant. And that's the end. Don't harbor hot. Anytime you want to harbor it, if somebody says, don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody, you know what you should remember? Remember Absalom. He nursed it for two years. He killed a man. Do you know it was that act that destroyed his life for life? Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. We are going home. Have you learned something today?